have it, Keith. Mm. Dig in. Bro, this is how it's done. Oh my god. Dude, we are indulging. It is so good. Skin just falling apart. Off the fire. All right, you guys, we're trying to get out of here. It is about to absolutely dump on us. So we're trying to like throw the camp together, uh, clean up everything. Don't leave any messes after you can. Probably we have to go through that to go diving. Really, there's no rush. We just need to be ready for the rain. We're missing out on these awesome diving conditions. and we are ready to get into it. We're diving deep to start off. Now Spencer went ahead and shot and missed this hogfish and I went down to clean up. There was a shark right there so I know I'm gonna have to make a good shot, pull the fish into me so we don't have any problems with the sharks. And we're diving about 60 to 70. I line up a good shot and give it to him. You can see that shot where Spencer shot originally. It kind of shot and tore out but I'm happy that we got the fish. I hate senselessly shooting fish and losing them for no good reason. So I'm glad we were able to land this guy. So once I got that fish in the boat, a nice zero came by. I didn't have everything hooked up yet. So I went ahead and hooked up my bell reel and I saw the fish on his way out. I went ahead and threw my throw flash and you see him literally turn 180 and come up to it. I'm taking my time, comes right into the throw flasher, land a good shot. And these throw flashers are so easy to make and so worth it, especially when you're over in the Bahamas searching for some zeros. Now we get into the little shallower water. Scott goes down, shoots a hogfish, and it's a good sized hogfish. Go ahead and duck under the boat there. I'm there just to make sure no sharks come up and everything's all good. Another fish in the boat. Now I really wanted to get a hogfish for the day, so I went ahead and took my time, waited for a really big one to show up because we're not allowed to bring that many back. I go ahead and line up on this nice one, but I realized that my tip was kind of off center and you see all these hogfish, no sense to rush a shot. I went ahead and shot, but my slip tip didn't engage. I went ahead and took my time, re-put my slip tip back on. I saw kind of where the hogfish went and rocked up. Went ahead, took it nice and easy getting up in there and landed a good shot. What a kook on that first shot. Now in this dive you get to see my sister take her nice sweet time going after these zeros. She saw it kind of off in the distance, makes a drop, slowly kind of cruises over to it and lands a good shot. Now she's using the Headhunter Nomad Roller Pole Spear and she really liked this spear because it's really fast with a lot of power. So I don't get anything on this dive, but it's a really cool dive. You can see some of the structure that we're diving and how much life is in this water. We're only diving between 15 and 20 feet, but that's, in my opinion, where some of most of the sea life will be. Now I drop down, another one thing you can do is make sure you get your pole spear loaded. I'm cruising around, and this is a really prime time territory to see fish. These little pilot bait fish love hanging around cave-like structures. And I heard, I think it was a kubera or a grouper somewhere in there, but I could not find it. I kept hearing a little grunty noise, a little clicking noise, and that's kind of a noise that some of those bigger predatory fish make. And usually they're making that noise because they're aggressive and they're kind of being territorial. But you see, this was a beautiful dive, lots of fish, lots of life. And this is one reason why I love diving in the Bahamas. Dude, oh, he's so giant. Giant, giants only. Oh, that's beautiful. Did Dude, you see that? Oh. Nice. Put it in the mouth. It's that, that is, is a beautiful. beauty. Look at the blood. So now we saw a grouper rocked up under this cave. I make a drop and I see him kind of sleeping up in there and I take the best shot that he gives me. It's really tight, but I land it. Now I went ahead, pushed my pull spear a little farther in and then pulled it back to disengage the slip tip. 
I hope he's in there. I went ahead and detached my belt reel so I don't have a line tethered from the surface to the bottom because I know he's not going to pull out. He's going to stay in that hole and hopefully we pull him out. Now we got some backup divers. Scott goes down, pulls my spear, and there was nothing on it. He must have tore off. He's he's. It was a little low. He's still in there though. It wasn't even in him. I, I, I heard a thump, so he must have been close to it. Okay. No, he was. There's not a whole lot of room in there. Let's give it just a second, and uh, the. Yeah, it's pretty stirred up. Yeah, it'll clear quick because the current. Now Spencer goes down to do a little recon mission and he actually lands a good shot on the fish and you'll be able to see him shoot and you'll see the fish take off. You see all right there, he kind of darted from one cave to another. Spencer goes ahead, points out where the fish went to. We all saw it so we know that we have the fish cornered. Now I go ahead and make him drop and that is a monster hogfish right in front of the cave but I know we're there for the grouper and we already got our limit on hogfish so I went ahead and gave him a pass. Now it's a little stirred up in there and I want to get a headshot but honestly I'm going to take whatever the fish gives me. I know he's going to be tired out. You can see there's a little bit of murkiness and blood in the water. That was kind of his head but I see his tail right here. I'm looking for more of a body shot but he's not giving it to me. All I see is the tail so I'm going to take what he's going to give me and I land a shot in the rear dorsal fin. Now I know I've got him good but I'm not going to put a ton of pressure. I just go ahead and leave my spear down there, let the fish tire himself out and we'll get him on the next dive. Hey, shot him in the ass. Now this is the final dive to get this grouper. I'll kind of talk you through the whole thing. And when you do these extraction dives, make sure you take your sweet time and be very relaxed and make sure you analyze the situation. I go ahead, find the fish, and he's trying to get farther back up in that cave and I don't want him to. I have him tethered with my slip tip. So what I realize is that I try to get my hand in his gills because I'll be able to pull him out. But with my left hand, I'm holding on the slip tip and keeping him from going farther up in there from that shot that I put into him. So I finally get my hands in his gills. I have those headhunter gloves on, so they're protecting my hands against any reef and rock and spines from the fish. Get my hands in the gills, and from that point, I just go ahead and slowly wiggle him back and forth and work him out, and I finally pull the fish out of the hole. Landed the fish, super happy because it was some good teamwork to land this fish. Dude, you messed up the cheeks, bro. <laughs> nice job. Look at that there. This is what we're talking about. He, this is all he gave me, so I just let him have it. And I made sure I got my hands in his gills before I tried to get him out of the hole. Otherwise, he was probably ripping this out. This didn't even go all the way through, so big fish. Woo! Guys, 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 you're live, you're live. Spencer just dropped down on this hole and he like plugged in and then he came up to the surface and he said, I need a backup shot. It's about a 40 pounder. <laughs> Scott goes right down, backup shot, and brought him out. Look at this guy. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Number two. Dude, that's a slob. That's my data. So that was insane. Dude, that was, Spencer, that was really good literally, I was giving a was little scoop on what happened with mine, and I heard 40 pound black, and they just but, they turned around. That was epic. So I wanted to do one more dive before we went home. Sure enough, a big zero came in. I went ahead and threw my throw flasher, and you see this guy booking towards it, like always. Wasn't surprised on his behavior, and I land a spine shot. Nice way to end the trip, and we're heading home for some good, good fish. you guys we are done diving for the day epic diving crystal clear especially on day two stay tuned and i will see you guys at the dock is that you is that you right here <laughs> all right you guys that was an epic trip you saw all those fish we got we're gonna get into cleaning we got a lot of work to do all this fish is going to our friends family ourselves nothing is gonna go to waste thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video i much appreciate it about five hours going to each of these episodes 
<laughs> even more if you include all the time diving. If you guys like this video, give it that thumbs up. And if you're new, think about possibly subscribing. If you have any questions, comment below. Like always guys, I will see you next week for another adventure. Later.